Hi, in this video we'll do something a little bit different. I received this voltage tester from Amazon seller Kaiweeds a long time ago along with some other stuff. Now I personally am not a big fan of these voltage testers, so I never actually bothered showing you guys this. I thought in this video we might as well do something fun and test its limit to see if it survives in extreme conditions. Before we proceed with the potentially destructive testing, I do want to power it on and show you guys what this voltage tester is capable of. One of the reasons I don't like these voltage testers is because they are typically capacitively coupled and are extremely prone to false positives. This is especially true when measuring the output from an isolated switching power supply. Let me power on this voltage tester and show you this behavior. Here I have a USB charger cable that is connected to an adapter, which is in essence a switching power supply. Now let me touch the metal sleeve here. You just saw that the detector thinks there is high voltage on the ground connector here, but I can assure you that this is just false positive. And to verify that, I have a multimeter here set to AC mode. I'm going to use one pin to touch the casing here and uh, use my finger, hold on to the other pin. You do see that we're picking up some voltage, but it's nowhere near a high voltage here. And also if I just press onto the casing here with my other finger, you'll see that the voltage actually collapses. So for all intents and purposes, the output is at safe voltage level. Now there are many reasons why there is usually some residual AC voltage at the output even for a well-designed isolated switching power supply. I won't go into a lot of the details, but many of these switching power supplies have Y capacitors between the primary and the secondary of the transformer for EMI suppression purposes. So there is some coupling, but the impedance is very high and therefore it's really not a safety problem when the circuit is properly designed. And because of the false positives, I rarely use this kind of voltage detectors. And to me, using a neon indicator based voltage detector is actually much more reliable. And they can be used to detect high voltage DC as well as AC. Whereas for this one is for AC only. Now with that said, this VT500 does have a few more tricks up its sleeves. For example, you can press the voltage button to measure the line voltage. Although it is not very accurate, but it's uh, nevertheless it shows you what the voltage is. So you can see that we're reading about 101, uh, whereas the voltage actually is about 120. So that is definitely quite a bit off. But nevertheless, it at least gives you some sense of the voltage you are dealing with. So this is definitely a nice touch. Another feature this tester offers is the continuity test. Now this feature, in my opinion, is not all that useful. Because fundamentally, this tester uses capacitive sensing to detect voltage, and it can't really tell the conductor has a 1 ohm resistance or 1 mega ohm resistance easily without some complex logic. And I can tell you, it definitely doesn't have the logic built in. Let me just demonstrate my point using a 1 mega ohm resistor here. Let me press the connect. You can see that we get a continuity bus. And it doesn't really matter if we test on this side of the wire or the other side. Essentially, it's the same measurement. And you just saw that the tester thinks there is continuity between the tip and my finger via this one mega ohm resistor, which really stretches the definition of continuity and the connectivity test. Now I'm ready to do some extreme testing. For that, I have a Burton high voltage power supply that can output up to 20,000 volts. Now I realize that this meter is not designed for DC voltage detection, but rather for AC only. But at least I'm curious to see how much over voltage this tester can endure without getting damaged. After all, the tester itself is rated for up to 300 volts. And this test should give us some idea of the safety margin of this meter. Obviously, I'm not going to hold the tester for the high voltage experiment. In order to simulate someone holding the tester, I'm using an anti-static grounding strip and connecting the strip to the body of the tester itself. As you can see here, it's clipped on in the back. The resistance of this grounding strip is roughly at one mega ohm. Let's take a quick measure here. And I'm just going to connect to one of the screws on the casing here. 
you can see that it's roughly one mega ohm. And I might just have one chance at this, so let me just make sure that everything is set up correctly. So let me bring in a meter. This is in DC measurement mode. Let me measure from the ground to the tip here. And you can see that we're at roughly 110 volts, which is close enough. And now let's measure between the tip and the grounding strip. I would expect the reading to be a little bit lower because of the resistance of that grounding strip. Yep, it's 98.7 volts. Okay, so now it seems like everything is set up and we can start the experiment. I guess let me just uh, crank up the voltage here. So this is roughly where the maximum rated voltage is, at 300 volts here. Everything appears to be still working. Let me further increase it. So right now we're at 500 volts. Let's take it to 1,000. Everything seems to be working still. And of course, it's not detecting anything because this is DC voltage. So now we're at 1,000 volts. And let's keep increasing. Now we're at 2,000 volts. Three, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand. Everything still appears to be working. Of course, we wouldn't know for sure until we finish the testing and uh, we can take another look. 7,000. 8,000. 9,000. 10,000. Let's just start cranking it all the way up. Hang on. I can see something on the screen briefly flashed. I'm not sure if you saw that. Let's uh, actually get a little closer here and we will uh, start cranking up again. And I saw the LCD briefly glitched out and I heard some noise, not entirely sure what that is, but let's keep cranking here. 12,000. Yeah, you can see that. Ah. There's some kind of uh, discharge that are going on. So let me actually adjust the grounding strip. Let me power it off. Okay, so a moment ago we saw the discharge. That's actually because of the grounding strip is uh, next to the battery, I think, internally. And I just rearranged the grounding strip a little bit. So hopefully it does not discharge. And by the way, the voltage tester still appear to be working, as you can see here. I can turn it off and turn it back on. So let's uh, increase the voltage. I think we stopped at around 10,000 volts, so let's uh, crank it up right there. So we're approaching 10,000, and now it's 10,000. 11,000. 12,000. Let me start cranking up. I just crank it all the way up. So now we're at 20,000. We did hear there's some discharge sound. Not sure where that is coming from. 
And we have been here for about uh, half a minute now. And I did see sometimes when you hear the discharge, the screen of the LCD started to flicker. Not entirely sure if there's any damage just yet. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it off and uh, we'll take a look at the voltage detector. Actually, it's uh, quite a good sign that we were able to power off this unit. Now, let me actually try to power it on to see if we can do that. Wow! It appears it is still working. So let me bring in a power strip here and see if it works. Oh, that is quite impressive. It seems it's still working. Even the voltage measurement you can see is still measuring correctly 110 volts. Now, that is quite impressive. You can tell that I'm definitely quite impressed. As at around 10,000 volts, when I first saw the spark, I thought for sure the tester was done at that point. But it managed to hang on, and later on we started hearing the hissing noise because of the discharge of some kind, but it managed to survive, and everything appears to be still working. Now let's open it up and take a quick look inside. So as you can see here, the tester uses a single AAA battery. So let me just remove the battery and let's uh, remove the screw as well. Ah, there's another screw hiding under the Kiwi's sticker here. So let me remove that as well. The inside of this tester is more or less what I expected. We do have this uh, chip on board that appears to be a microcontroller, and you can see that from the programming header up here. Let me just zoom it in. You can see a little bit closer here. That's the programming header right there. And here you can see an inductor that's probably part of the DC-DC converter to supply the voltage required by the microcontroller and also the LED. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you the LED early on. Later, I will try to show you that. And I think the design here is actually proper. As you can see, we do have this very long resistive divider. And by the look of it, the first few are actually 47 mega ohm. Let me just verify that. So let me use the multimeter here and take a look. Let's just look at the first one. Yep, indeed, is 47 mega ohm. And we have another 47 mega ohm. So these are in series. And this one is also a 47 mega ohm. This is essentially forming one resistor, 150 mega ohms. Of course, we can't measure that high. These three are in series. And then the last one, let me see. Yeah, that's also a 475. So, okay, so all four of these resistors are in series. And the one here, this is a, okay, so this is a 480K. So that's the voltage divider there. And here is a close-up of the resistive divider. Now, remember the discharge we heard against the screw at the back of the case here. And if you look at the metal inserts, it's actually not connected to anything on the other side. So that may have explained why this tester survived the high voltage ordeal. This voltage detector has an LED in the front and it can illuminate the surface you are trying to test. And I forgot to show you that earlier, so let me just quickly power it on and show you here. So if you just uh, short press this button, you can see that the LED turns on, which is quite convenient. Well, we have at least proved here that this voltage detector can definitely withstand quite a bit of over voltage, and that is quite remarkable. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and remember to subscribe to the channel. I will catch up with you next time.